Hi, this is Matt from ESU, and welcome to another edition of From the Workbench. Today we're going to cover some of the most basic and uh, the kind of the key to the low sound experience, and that's downloading sounds into your new decoders. Um, maybe we've done a new firmware update, or maybe we've been out uh, doing lots and lots of recordings like we have been, and we have all kinds of new sound files. Uh, we're just about at our 100th sound file. It should be coming uh, this coming week here. Um, there's actually four or five that are just about ready to go, so we're constantly putting out new updates and you know, no need to rip your engine apart or uh, tear off the handrails or rub that weathering off or ruin all the wiring just throw it on a low programmer and add that new sound to it so and there's lots of varieties so just about everything that you could have a model for we have a sound for and if we don't we're adding that so the nice thing about the low sound decoders is that you can use something that's really quite close right now and then as that sound becomes available you can add it and as we're always updating and always recording it probably won't be too long until we've got it so so the first thing we've got to do is we have to decipher which decoder we have now both our low sound v4s and our select decoders are downloadable so you can change the sounds in them um, for today's experience we're going to uh, start with a select decoder so all we're going to do is is update the sound file we're not really going to do too much editing within just show you the basics of how to go to the website download it and then get it from the computer into the decoder so as we know we have a select let's start by going to the low sound download pages which is uh, where you would click right here and there's a couple different ways you could get to it you could go up to downloads go to files but the most simple way is to just simply go to the low sound download pages once you're here, you're going to see a number of different options that you can choose from. Uh, if you're using a European file in a v4.0, uh, whether it be just our default files or one that we've equipped in a factory equipped engine, uh, you would go with this top box here and one of the two that you need. Um, on the bottom box, we use either the 4.0 North American or Australian sounds, um, or we have here the low sound select sound files. And again, if you've bought an engine that you want to update, um, or maybe you bought a, a second engine and you want it to work exactly like your, your low sound equipped engine from the factory, you can find those files that we've worked with the manufacturers on in this menu here. So for today's sake, we're just going to go and we're going to get a retail file for the select. This is probably the, the most often used category in North America. So we want to click into here. Once we're here, we have lots of choices to choose from. As you can see at the very top, as of today, we have 98 files. Again, next week we'll be at our 100th. Um, so once we're here, we just need to kind of figure out what it is that we want. Um, you can choose by, by going through the search projects. You can choose by prime mover. Uh, you can choose by locomotive type. Like here, I could, I could type in 567. I could get all the 567 equipped engines we have. If I'm not mistaken, it's like 28 files. I just did this the other day. Um, lots of 567. So let's just do that real quick here. We can just type in 567. Um, once we type that in, we're going to see a whole bunch of them that we have available. Here's uh, one of the 16 cylinders that we have. This is a C block. Um, here's a 567 and a 12 cylinder. Here's a 16 cylinder, but in a D3 turbo version. Um, as we scroll down, here's a dual 12 cylinder, like for an E unit. Here's a six cylinder and a 567A. Here's a 16 and a 567BC. These were all recorded from different locomotives. So it's not just, well, I know the engine uses a 567. Well, which one? Um, you can actually type in by GP10 in this case and come up with the 567 that was in those Paducah built or rebuilt uh, GP10s. Um, here's another turboed version and the list just goes on and on and on. And the other thing that you're going to notice here as time goes on, um, I don't see any right here, but there's going to be some that are different versions. So we'll see, you know, 12 cylinder 567B and then maybe a 12 cylinder 567B V2. And let's see if we can click on here and there's one right at the top. So a V2 file, if you've noticed on the last page, we had another 567D3. So this is from a separate locomotive, an additional locomotive. So when they're consisted together, they will never sound the same because it was recorded from a completely different locomotive. 
Here's a third version of the 567C. So there's three of those available. Um, and that just gives you some variety. So enough of the, well, it's a 567, it'll fit anything. No, it won't. There's a lot of differences. And, and we've tried to give you as many as we possibly can. So, um, so let's just choose one of these. It really doesn't matter. Let's just choose the one that was right up there on top. And that was this 567C. So what we want to do is go to download and this will pull it into the computer. Now we have the HO select, we have a select director micro or a select L for our large scale products and O scale and others. Um, it really doesn't matter here. It, it, the computer, I'm sorry, the software will actually, it will do the conversions that you would need. So if you're downloading and putting it into a micro decoder, even if you downloaded the L, the software would convert it to a micro. Um, it's nice to have the actual file though. There are things within here like the the L has a lot more output. So as you open that file, it's gonna be set up for the L with those outputs. Um, the micro will have less, so you know, things like that. So it's just better if you know what you've got, just put it in here. The only thing you can't do here, the only thing you gotta pay attention to, is that if you are using a Loc Sound Select file, you use a Loc Sound Select decoder, and if you're using, a, I should say that the other way around, if you're using a V4.0 decoder, you should use a V4.0 file. So again, to repeat myself, Loc Sound Select decoder, and you'll use a Loc Sound Select file, any of these. And if you're using a V4.0 decoder, make sure it's a V4.0 file. And just to kind of back up very quickly, again, you'll notice those two files are here. So again, V4.0s, use from here, selects, use from here, or also in here. And most of these are also selects because that's what we use in North America for the, the factory equip files. So let's get back in here. We're gonna go with this very top one, which happens to be what it was, well, it's a 567C, so we'll use this one, it doesn't really matter today. Download it, we'll just pick the top one, and we're going to accept all this. Basically, this is, uh, you now you can read through, it's just uh, liability type stuff, and uh, you know we're not gonna steal your firstborn or anything, so you should be good there. So go ahead and uh, accept and download. Now, here's where things can get a little bit, uh, I won't say confusing, but if you're not really good with computers, you just wanna pay attention to this a little bit. Um, I've had a couple of people call and say, oh, where does your software put a file once I download it? The software puts it wherever you tell it to. So uh, depending on your browser, this may look a little bit different, but basically it's asking where on your computer do you want to be able to find this. Um, for today, we could put it a lot of places. Um, if you, you could just directly open it and then save it to where you want later, or you can choose save file, and this will go into wherever you're telling your, your browser to save files. Oftentimes it's in downloaded files. Um, so if you can't find it, look into a downloaded file section on your on your main drive and you should find it there. So usually I will save the file when I download. We'll hit OK. And in this browser, you'll notice that little arrow got blue. When we click on here, we can see which ones I've downloaded. The top one is usually the most recent. So at this point, all we have to do is double click and it's gonna open it up into the software, the local sound uh, software. So uh, let's see here. <laughs> Seems like it got uh, put behind. So now we've got it up front. So now that it's open, the first thing we wanna do is download this file into the decoder. We don't wanna make any changes. We don't wanna change our address. We don't wanna go into function mapping and change how the function buttons work, anything like that. We just simply wanna get it into the decoder. This is gonna take a little bit of time and we wanna make sure everything goes well. And if there is a problem, we wanna know if it's on the file side or if it's the problem of a change that was made that's not working properly. Maybe you don't have something wired correctly or whatever it could be. So the best thing to do is to just divide and conquer, download it into the decoder first, and then we'll make changes. So to download it into the decoder, we simply go up to this uh, musical note with a red arrow, and we click on that, we'll get another menu pop up. Now, this can be done in multiple ways. Um, programmer, write sound data is the other place you can find this. It does exactly the same thing, pulls up this window. Uh, typically, at this point, usually there may be a blank decoder if, if it's a first time use, or this is a new decoder, or uh, I'm sorry, decoder, it's already been used, but we wanna ov overwrite the defaults um, unless you've already set this up for uh, 
function mapping and speed curves and things like that that are special and maybe you're just going from a 567b to a 567c or something but in most cases you're going to want to overwrite and make these new file settings the defaults so at that point we would click next and we would wait now um, once we do that it's going to take about oh maybe 20 minutes um, this will kind of go through the process I actually don't have a decoder on the track right now so I'm going to cancel this out uh, this is the menu that you would get once it's finished it will go away just like it has and everything will be complete loaded onto the file but just to repeat that'll take about 20 minutes depending on your computer speeds and things like that um, if you see errors at that point it could be a number of different things um, sometimes maybe you don't have good contact with your track if you have a non ESU power pack installed I don't recommend that because that can actually interfere with programming um, the ESU power packs are actually buffered and can take the data around the capacitance and uh, it'll it'll program properly if you have a non ESU power pack the first thing you want to do in programming is remove it um, because it will cause problems and it can actually damage the decoder and confuse it enough that it, it won't be usable anymore so um, so just some heads up on that so that's basically it once you have it loaded into the decoder then you can start making your function mapping changes uh, you can make your address changes and even at those I still recommend just do some things one at a time change your address okay check it everything's working go on to your function mapping um, you know if there's some common things that you're very comfortable with that's one thing if you're gonna do something that you know maybe is a little uh, outside the realm of normal maybe you'd want to do things again just one thing at a time and check and make sure everything's working it just helps you when you're troubleshooting so you know where you left off so I hope this has helped if you have any questions please contact me at uh, support at locsound.com or uh, just come to our website or call us on the phone or just reply to this YouTube video so I hope you had a great day um, hope you're having a great weekend as it's coming up if you have any questions just let us know take care